The biggest lie about Elite Dangerous, and indeed all other space games, is simple. And it's not the one you'd think. It's not that space is empty or that space is boring. The biggest misunderstanding is that space is big because it's far. And this misunderstanding is precisely what leads to the problem of as wide as an ocean, as deep as a puddle. And most of us have no doubt felt that. The thing is, this is all very easily fixed. It just requires us to reframe the entire concept of size. And that reframe changes everything about how space games should be designed. Yes, it's true that distance in space is vast, but this is the least interesting way to convey scale because it doesn't change how the game feels to play, and Elite is perhaps one of the clearest examples of this. Fortunately, there's a very easy but non-intuitive fix to this, because the kind of big that actually breaks your brain isn't distance, it's separation, it's quantity. It's the fact that you can put an insane amount of stuff inside any tiny part of space and still never notice any of it is there. This very simple reframing fundamentally changes how you design games set in space. Here's a simple thought experiment to give that some context. Imagine hundreds of city-sized space stations around Earth, not on the surface, but scattered through orbit. From any one of them, the rest would be invisible, not because they're hidden, but because in space, even large objects collapse into insignificance. And yes, that's the type of scale that has nothing to do with travel time. Now, let's push that one step further into what it means for games. Imagine Earth orbit as a whole stack of different regions, shipyards the size of cities, habitat rings, massive debris fields you can get lost in, and seas of salvage that take months to clear. Of course, you can add just about anything else you can possibly imagine. Some of these could easily be bigger than countries, and from inside one, you'd still have no natural sense that the others even exist. And all of this and much more around just one planetary body. And that is what big actually means. And once you feel it, the entire space game scale conversation flips upside down. Let's start then with a really clear example. Elite Dangerous has a one-to-one -one scaled Milky Way, 400 billion star systems, and the usual way to talk about this is that it would take forever to visit them all. But that's not why it's big. Here's why it is actually big. You can stay low cool. Not low cool as in one system, you understand, but low cool as in a small bubble of space by galaxy standards, a tiny region compared to the whole map. And inside that bubble, especially if you're near the galactic core, there's still more stars, more planets, more moons, and more bodies, more potential destinations than you could meaningfully explore in a lifetime. And that's the point people miss. Elite isn't just impressive because the edge of the galaxy is far away, it's also impressive because the space around you could easily contain far more than is possible to fully explore. The bigness isn't only locked behind distance, instead it's also contained within density. Scale itself is actually right next to you, and it's there in sheer numbers. So, when someone says Elite is big because it takes ages to cross, yes, that's very true, it's a natural way to look at things, but the uh, deeper meaning here, the deeper truth, is much harsher. In the real galaxy, even if you never travelled far at all, even if you uh, treated the, your own little region like your own personal neighbourhood, you'd still drown in the absolute scale and density of it. And that's the first crack in the usual scale equation when it comes to space games. It's an area where almost every space game out there, including Elite Dangerous, gets it absolutely fundamentally wrong. And this in turn has a direct impact upon gameplay. So, that is the first reframing of scale. And it's one which places a very different perspective on designing space games, because now you're no longer thinking about scale purely in terms of distance and travel time. You're looking at how much you could put around Earth, how much you could put around any other region of space, and what this actually means, both in terms of gameplay as well as in law, politics, and just about anything else you want to throw in to the game. Now the second one is where the argument really starts to feel quite unintuitive, because it's the one that makes a single star system feel bigger than an entire galaxy map. Now, imagine you're in orbit around Earth. Not landing, not walking on the surface, you never even touch the planet. You live in the space around it. Now most people's mental picture of orbit is basically this, a planet, a ring around it, 
maybe at one or two stations. You look out the window and they are all there. And that picture is entirely wrong. Not scientifically, psychologically. Because orbit isn't a ring. Orbit is a volume. It's a three-dimensional shell of space with an absurd amount of room inside of it. And inside of that room, you could place stations, shipyards, fuel depots, habitats, telescopes, factories, graveyards of decommissioned hulls, junk fields, salvage zones, entire communities. And from any one of those places, most of the rest might as well not exist because you wouldn't see them. They wouldn't silhouette against anything. They'd be lost in glare, lost in distance, lost in the sheer scowl of the sky. Unlike on Earth, where another city might be lost over the horizon, in space it's very different. You get this infinite black bowl where distant doesn't look like distance, it just looks like nothing. And remember, we're sticking to just one planetary body here and just the orbit around it. And if you built hundreds of big stations around Earth, you wouldn't get a crowded skyline, you'd just get lonely points of light. And without instruments, you might not even know anyone else was out there. That is a kind of scowl that has nothing to do with travel time. It's scowl as coexistence without contact, scowl as density without visibility, scowl as a world big enough to hide other worlds. And that feels unintuitive. Well, good, because that's the cognitive hurdle that this entire video is about. Now, the reason people struggle with this isn't because they're dumb. It's because the human brain is trained on surfaces. In many ways, we live on a 2D skin wrapped around a rock. Our intuition is shaped by roads and horizons and landmarks and skylines. We measure how big something is by asking how long does it take to cross it? What can I see from here? How many things can fit side by side? But space doesn't behave like that. In space, side by side becomes in front of, behind, above, below, ahead, under, and somewhere else entirely. So when games flatten a star system into a dot with a few icons around it, it looks normal to us because maps are normal to us. But what that flattening does is erase the most important part of space. The sheer amount of available room, the sheer amount of empty room. And room is the point. The room is the scowl. So it's here that my argument that one star system is enough comes into play. It's not about travel time, it's not about realism, it's not even about how long it would take to fly to Jupiter. In this idea, a star system is not just a list of planets. It's not Earth, Mars, asteroid belt and Jupiter. A star system is a stack of regions, and each region has its own kind of space. And for the purposes of this video, or even for the purposes of a video game, we can actually split it without getting technical. Earth has space that's close in and busy. Then there's space that's higher and quieter, and then there's huge in-between around the moon where near-Earth starts to feel like deep space. And then there are pockets of space where things naturally gather, not because of friction, but because of geometry, stable places, useful places, places where it makes sense to build, to park, to hide. And none of that requires you to land on a planet. Of course, planets still matter because they're resource wells and gravity wells and light sources and shadows and anchors. They shape everything. But the argument isn't that Mars is cool because it has deserts. The argument is the space around Mars is its own region. The space around Venus is its own region. The space close to the Sun is its very own region. And the space near a super large planet like Saturn or Jupiter becomes structured in ways that literally don't exist anywhere else. In other words, you don't need an entire galaxy to get regional variety. You already have it inside just one star system, but only if you stop treating the star system like a menu or just points of interest or UI links. In other words, you fundamentally have to stop treating it about getting from A to B. Right, at this point, we've got three different kinds of big. We've got big by distance, that is the amount of time it takes to get from A to B. We've got big by numbers, that is elite being huge because local space contains so many places to actually explore. And we've got big by separation. Orbit can be dense with activity and still feel lonely because most of it is invisible. It's simply so huge you can't see it right across that distance. And this is where the usual space game argument really starts to fail because it keeps trying to solve scowl with distance. It focuses only really on one of these aspects. And even when it does have huge numbers of star systems or huge numbers of space stations, 
It's all about getting from A to B. It keeps asking, how far is it? How do we unlock warp? How long should the trip take? But the real question isn't any of that, not for a good space game design. Instead, it is this. How many distinct regions can exist here without collapsing into one another? And how much world can we actually fit into each single region? And it's this entire concept that space games just keep leaving on the table. So let's bring all of this back to space games, because space games is what this conversation and this channel is all about. Why then do galaxies with billions of stars often feel shallow, boring, repetitive, or to use a term often associated with elite dangerous, as wide as an ocean, deep as a puddle? What precisely is going on here? Well, it's because most games represent space like this. A star system is just one node. A planet is one node. A station is a node. And everything else is just space in between nodes. In other words, all that space is effectively nothing. And what this creates is a system that becomes a checklist. It's a set of icons. It's a route. And once you do that, you've already thrown away the kind of scowl that we've been talking about. You've taken a volume and turned it into a line. And that means you can have a space game that contains an entire galaxy, but feels very empty. And right there is the lie that I'm trying to get at with this video. Now, to be clear here, it's not the type of lie as in a scam. It's a lie as in a distortion. The map says vast, but your experience says small. And that's because the idea here is that small is not about distance. Small is actually a lack of internal structure. In other words, a galaxy made of shallow systems feels smaller than a single system made of deep regions. And the reason for that is because depth creates a sensation of a world that continues beyond your awareness. In other words, you get the sensation that there's far more around you than just a long list of locations in your nav menu. So let's try and ground this entire concept somewhat. What does one system done properly actually mean? What does it look like? Not in terms of lore, not in terms of here's my dream of factions, but in terms of the structure of the game and the system itself. Well, it means that you stop designing space games like a chain of destinations. You stop designing it like geography. Instead, you take space around bodies and treat it like regions with identity. You have zones of traffic, zones of quiet, zones of clutter, zones of danger, zones of industry, zones of secrecy, zones that feel close but aren't. And you also have zones that feel empty but are full of things that you haven't yet noticed. And the key here is that these regions don't have to be visually obvious. And the reason for that is very simple. It's because you've already accepted the most important truth about space. Space can be crowded and still look empty. So your density isn't a skyline, it's a network. You discover it through signals, instruments, contracts, rumors, telescopes, comms traffic, traffic corridors, shadow dead zones, and much more. And it becomes a world you learn, not a list of items in your nav menu, and certainly not your elements in your heads up display. And that is precisely how you make a single star system feel vast, because the vastness is conceptual. It's layers, not landmarks. Okay, so moving on, we come to the whole idea of if anyone's actually doing this, a comparison. It's the point in the video where I'd normally run down a list of games, but I don't want to do that this time because I don't want this to become a list of game X is good and game Y is bad. Because this idea, this entire concept is much bigger than one single title. In fact, it's a redefinition of what the space game genre should be. But all that said, you can see a few different aspects of this concept in a few distinct places. For example, Kerbal Space Program. This makes small systems feel absolutely huge because every place has relationships. It forces you to respect the fact that space is structured. Elite Dangerous, meanwhile, and somewhat ironically, is the best proof about the numbers argument. It demonstrates how local space can already be too much but it often treats individual star systems as just points of contacts. A station here, a moon there, a settlement elsewhere, all linked together by traveling from A to B. In other words, not distinct regions. No Man's Sky, on the other hand, takes a very different approach. It gives a lot of meaning to planets, making them vast, making them quite unique. But the star systems act as a container, like a bowl in which these items are floating just a substrate to move around in, rather than a region to live in. And then there's Star Citizen. And yes, Star Citizen is trying to do this one star system with deep regional identity thing. 
but it's certainly not the poster child for this argument. But it is a reminder that the direction is possible. It's the one, perhaps the only game, that is actively trying it on any level. And that is, you can make a single star system feel like a life. So the point here is that we have seen a few pieces of this scattered across a few different games, but I don't think we've seen a space game that fully commits to the definition of a scout we're talking about here. Not distance, not time, but space, room, layers, quantity and separation, all those things that essentially make up for volumetric space and separate regions. Okay, so in this video, I've tried to reframe what space actually could mean in a space game and what more specifically it means to me. And I really do feel that uh, developers as a whole just haven't clicked with this and they haven't really designed a game around this entire concept. But if this concept does click for you, if it changes what you ask for as a player, then, well, suddenly you might notice, you might be feeling that more star systems stop sounding like the obvious upgrade. It starts actually sounding like the wrong goal. And that's not because big maps are bad. It's rather because the space game genre itself keeps buying breadth by selling depth. Instead of adding more dots and leaving each dot hollow, the dream here isn't give me a galaxy. The dream is give me one star system that feels like it could swallow me. Give me an orbit that feels like a continent. Give me regions of space that feel separate even when they're close, and give me a world that is so vast that I don't even know what is there, and I can constantly retain that feeling. The bottom line here then is that yes, space is far, but that's not the reason space breaks us. Space is big because it can hide things in plain sight, because you can fill it with worlds and still look out the window and see absolutely nothing. And that's the lie space games keep inheriting from the way we talk about maps. They keep trying to prove scowl with distance and time when the real proof is simpler and stranger. A single star system can already contain more world than most games will ever build, not because it takes a long time to cross, but rather because a relatively small space, such as the orbit around a single planet, can contain a literally absurd amount of content. In other words, we don't need more galaxies. We need to stop flattening the ones we already have because the best space game might not be the one that lets you travel a thousand light years. It might just be the one that makes you feel lost just 2,000 kilometers away from Earth.